Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, October 10th, 2013 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz and we'll begin the meeting by asking the clerk to call the roll. Ms. Present. Present. Here. Here. Present. Present. Thank you very much. Um, now the next item on the agenda is the public comment period. Um, I did not see that anyone had signed up, but if anyone does wish to speak in public comment, now would be their opportunity. Okay, uh, seeing none, I'll then turn it over to announcements. Are there any announcements from the uh, school committee? I have an announcement. Okay. Okay, um, Bridge Street School PTO asked me to announce that they're having an auction to benefit their fifth grade nature's, nature's classroom on Thursday, October 24, and contact Bridge Street School for more information. And then also the Northampton Prevention Coalition is having a full coalition meeting on Tuesday, October 29th from 3 to 4.30 at Northampton High School. And if you're interested in taking an active role in investing in the health and well-being of Northampton youth, please join us. They're inviting parents, teenagers, teachers, school administrators, police officers, business people, the faith community, city leadership, and community members are all invited to attend and encouraged to attend. Um, and that's what I have. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, hearing none, we'll then move on to uh, recommended actions. And we have tonight uh, several <laughs> items that will uh, comprise the consent agenda. Uh, first are a series of minutes that need your approval. Uh, superintendent search subcommittee of September 11th, 2013. Uh, school committee meeting of September 12th, 2013. And superintendent search committee subcommittee uh, September 16th, 2013. We then have um, several contracts. Uh, we have a contract with the Northampton Parent Center. Uh, this is $9,065 uh, for family support services and play groups. Tri-State Technologies, $15,000. This is a maintenance for food services uh, point of sale system. Novell Incorporated, uh, $6,860. These are for licensing agreements for server and configuration management. Uh, Rene L. Coty, uh, this is $87,765. This is glycol for the NHS heating and cooling system, freeze prevention system. And I want to just check with the business manager. Are those? Is that the complete set? That's it. Great. And then we have a series of field trip requests. Uh, Leeds uh, Elementary School a Nature's Classroom trip, November 5th through the 8th, 2013. Ryan Road Nature's Classroom trip, November 5th through the 8th, 2013. Jackson Street Nature's Classroom, November 12th through the 15th, 2013. Then the NHS girls basketball team to Hartford, Connecticut on December 19th, 2013. The NHS chamber choir to New York City, April 4th through the 5th, 2014. And then the JFK eighth grade French students uh, annual trip to Montreal, May 23rd to the 25th, 2014. So I would ask for a motion to approve this consent agenda. So moved. I'd like to um, move to take out the Northampton Parent Center. Um, just because I have questions and then. Okay, so uh, there's been a motion to remove the uh, parent center contract from the agenda, uh, so we'll do that. Any other issues regarding the consent agenda? Okay, so uh, now can I have the motion to? So moved, second. Okay, and seconded, so it's been made and seconded. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? Okay, and now we'll just focus on the one contract uh, that Ms. Duvall wanted to pull off the consent agenda. And did you want to um, ask questions about that? Um, yes, I did. Um, I asked Ed, and he doesn't know what it is either. So I'm just wondering, what is it? Was it for? And, and okay, uh, I'll defer to the business manager. The uh, the uh, portion that particular contract we. We go into a contract arrangement with Northampton uh, Parent Center. They provide services for 
all kids in the community, basically from six months up to five years. Uh, this is part of the overall grant that we have. That's approximately $90,000. And as part of the requirements of the, the CFCE grant, we have to be able to provide these type of services. So we found it to be the most efficient way is the Parent Center offers these services on our behalf and uh, they, uh, they service about 35 to 40 families a day for all the services that are outlined uh, within the grant specifications. Great. Well, thank you. It's a wonderful program. We used it for four years or five years until my daughter, well, my daughter grew up. I was just wondering what we were using the money for. Thank you yep. very much. And that, that's only just a small piece of the entire grant. Right. Where's the rest of it going? Well, we have other programs and we have other staffing uh, in our district that gets covered by that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So then could I have a motion to approve that contract? Motion to approve. Is Second. There, okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving that contract, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Great. So now we'll move on uh, to the next uh, section of the agenda, uh, reports and recommendations. Um, and tonight we're honored to be able to welcome our two new student representatives uh, to the school committee. Um, we have Emily Stam and we have Dylan Weaver with us tonight. Um, and uh, it's been a long-standing tradition that there would be that there are these two representatives who are elected. Um, uh, and they sort of alternate taking turns uh, being at the meeting going forward. So it's great to see both of you here, and I will turn the floor over to you if you'd like to make <coughs> any um, presentations or announcements. Thank you. My name's Dylan Weaver. Um, and I'm Emily. We also have, on a third actually, Maddie Kathleen, who couldn't make it tonight, but will be able to um, participate in the rest of the time here. Okay. We are all seniors in NHS at NHS. Um, we participate in theater and the athletics at NHS. I participate each year in theater, the musical, cross country, um, ultimate frisbee, and I am involved with um, GSA and environmental club. And I'm also involved in theater and fencing and mountain biking club. And Maddie, who couldn't be here, is involved in fencing, theater, and ceramics. So as you guys know, um, this year we are experiencing a new principal, Mr. Lombardi, who is transitioning from being a vice principal to a principal. And so far this year it's been a really, really amazingly smooth transition. And he has not only has it been smooth, but he's kept up the amazing qualities that our student body loved from him last year. You can still see him wandering the halls and talking to students and being really personable and available. And we've also had a change in personnel in the National Honor Society. Um, Last year, Ms. Michael retired and was replaced by Dan Moylan and Cindy Murphy. And so far, that transition has gone smooth as well. Also, a really exciting event happened last night. We had our 14th annual Powder Puff Games, which is a really great thing where the girls' uh, senior class and the girls' junior class are pitted against each other in this role that you always see males playing. And then males of each corresponding uh, class then cheerlead and it was really great everyone went and the seniors won uh, 26 to 14. Um, and we also had a few performances of the play Death Trap which was a thriller in two acts performed by five actors. It was a huge success directed by Rosie Tabachnik and starring Jonah Godfrey. Um, so all of these things, especially the Powder Puff game, um, has been leading towards Booster Week, which is going to be next week, which we're really excited about, which involves lunch games each day and um, dressing up towards themes, which are then going to each class going to be counted, and the winning class is going to be given a certain amount of money for their prom eventually when they have it. Um, but for those themes, uh, each class actually has different kinds of themes. This year, the freshman theme is Boston Strong. Uh, the sophomore theme is Haunted House. The junior is Superheroes. And our senior theme is The Wizard of Oz. Which will lead up at the end of the week to the pep rally and a parade Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so that concludes our presentation. We're very happy to be here and look forward to coming back next month. 
thank you for listening. Uh, we hope you have a better idea of what's been happening at Northampton High School. Thank you both. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, now we'll move on to um, our next report, which is a report on the district's uh, MCAS data from uh, Superintendent Nash. Okay. All right. I um, put before you this evening some graphs which show our spring MCAS report and scores from all the students that were tested. And um, if you have those, you can look through them. If there's anything in particular you want to talk about, I'm happy to meet with you. Um, but I'd like to give a narrative, both in terms of the highlights of those tests <coughs> and also in terms of what you will be doing in the future. So first of all, I would like to caution school committee members as well as everyone else that MCAST is only one <laughs> way that we measure student achievement. And I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, unlike possibly other people, I do see value in MCAS, but I don't think it's the end all of the way we look at our students. We had some excellent news from the MCAST, we had some good news, and we had not so good news regarding these scores. So in terms of the not so good news, we now have two of our elementary schools in level three. <coughs> And I'm sure that you realize that the state um, education department has come up with five levels for schools, uh, one being exceptional and five being uh, basically in receivership. In fact, Massachusetts has no schools in level five at this point. Um, because we have at least one school at a level three, the entire district is rated at a level three. That's the designation that we have as a district. The good news is that one of our elementary schools, which was a level three last year um, and remains a level three, significantly improved in all three of their MCAS subjects from last year. The percentage of students testing pro um, proficient or higher in English rose from 48% to 51%, 28% to 48% in math, and 29% to 42% in science. So I would like to give kudos to those students, teachers, and principal. They made a significant gain over last year, although it was not at the level, the target level, that the state requested. Um, our excellent news is that Northampton High School rose from a level two school to a level one school, making their targets and narrowing the achievement gaps um, and those students, teachers, and administrators certainly need to be recognized for their efforts as well. I think it's also interesting to note that although we struggle with closing the achievement gap in both math and English um, language arts at the elementary level, those same students become level one students when they reach the high school level. So I see this as a pattern of continued growth as the students progress by grade level. And I'm sure some people out there may be thinking, well, you know, some of our students end up going to Smith Vocational. But Smith Vocational this year managed to um, go from a level three to a level one. So it's not because uh, the loss of some of our students. I just think that there is something interesting to be said about the fact that, that our students do progress and the growth is there between the elementary moving up progressively to the high school where they really are level one students. So the important part is what are we going to do about the de designation we have because um, we obviously have room for improvement. So <coughs> we're doing several things. I've met with principals, um, director of uh, curriculum and assessment, director of special education, the ELL. Uh, and a number of other administrators with regard to how can we attack this problem. Um, first of all, we continue to work with the district and school <coughs> assistance centers. They're called DSAC for short. These were teams put together by the Department of Education to help schools at level three and level four. Um, we're fortunate with our team that we have here that's led by Dr. Donna Harlan. Uh, who was previously the assistant superintendent in Northampton <coughs> several years ago. And she acts as the DSAC coordinator. On that team, there are various individu individuals who have uh, been hired by the state ed department to work with schools. 
and uh, each of the teams consist of uh, someone who's a specialist in ELA, uh, English Language Arts, someone who's a specialist in math, and a data analysis person who can look at all of our data regardless of what it is, analyze it, and help us determine where we need to make changes. DSAC also holds regional network meetings to which we are invited to attend and we do. For instance, I believe it was about a week and a half ago that we sent a number of people, teachers and administrators, to um, um, one of their regional networks that happened to have been on mathematics. We have another one coming up in um, English language arts. And these are really good because they are regional. We hear from other school districts as to what's making uh, sense for them to do changes that will help with their student progress as well. Secondly, we have established in each of our schools uh, data teams and instructional leadership teams. Um, these are teachers working with principals um, to analyze test results, either by department um, at uh, both JFK and the high school, or by grade level at the elementary schools. And they will look at individual MCAS questions um, so that teachers may understand the range of student responses. And as a result of the analysis, data teams will determine appropriate changes in instructional practices. And they will also help ensure that our curricula is aligned with the Common Core. Uh, because starting next year, we will be tested uh, on the Common Core. Um, thirdly, we're looking at the district from a pre-K through 12 perspective by having the elementary schools work together and then collaborating with the middle school and the high school to assure alignment pre-K through 12 in all subject areas, not just English, math, and science. To further this objective, as well as other initiatives, the director of curriculum and assessment position has become full-time. And um, as I was talking with one of the board members earlier, I think that that's been one of the um, difficulties in Northampton is we've not had a person um, recently full-time to help with coordination in the curriculum and assessment areas. Um, and I think also number four is very important and that is we're increasing the opportunities for faculty professional development uh, which is aligned with our district and school improvement plans for our faculty. So those things we've undertaken. Um, in the last uh, three weeks we've had various meetings with um, uh, people yesterday we had one talking about curriculum mapping which we need to do in this district and how we might go about that we have also met on um, looking at the elementary report card um, standards based we haven't um, done anything with the report card in a number of years and we've also met with um, the representative for math from the DSAC group who came to talk with us as well um, because we're looking at supplemental materials to our current math curriculum. So I guess I would end this part by saying that we cannot keep doing uh, the same things and expect different results. We need to make some changes. And um, I think whoever wrote the Gazette's editorial on September 6 indicated that those changes that um, several districts, not just Northampton, will need to make will take money and resources um, because it really is important that all of our students are successful, not just some of them. So um, I have to give a hand to the administrators who are looking forward to, to the challenge, who have really um, started uh, with a very positive attitude, knowing that we can do better. And I also think they have met with their faculty, and I see very positive results coming from faculty members who feel that they, too, um, want to be a part of the changes that need to be made and um, assure the success of all of our students. So that's my report. Um, if you have questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Other questions for the superintendent uh, regarding her report? Ms. Duvall. I just have one question. Um, um, on the professional learning <coughs> development that you're talking about, are, are we also talking about professional learning communities in mm -hmm. that? That's part of the professional development. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was wondering because when I was over at one of the open houses, they were talking about the professional learning mm -hmm. communities of teachers and, and wanting more of that. So I was just yes. wondering if that was what you were talking about. So we're, thank doing, you. we're doing that both in our schools and we're also working with the collaborative. Mm -hmm. The collaborative have, 
has um, <coughs> professional learning communities in just about all of the areas. Um, and in fact, there is one for principals, and um, I've highly recommended that the principals attend that one as well. Thank you. Mr. Meyer. Polls looking back over at least this four-year period, and I suspect if I look back as far back as the MCAS goes, it, it might hold as well. There's a um, there's a pretty clear discordance, and I'm just looking at grades five, six, seven, and eight between ELA and mathematics performance. It's really striking. I mean, obviously, individual kids will have strengths in different domains, but for the whole population to be scoring, um, you know, again, grade five, um, advanced and proficient, there's 61 percent, mathematics 51, so that's a 10-point difference. Uh, it goes to 25-point difference the next year in sixth grade, um, up to 35 points in the eighth grade. Um, you know, eighth, eighth grade, the, the scores in ELA are, are very impressive, 85 percent in advanced or proficient, um, but only 50 um, in mathematics. And I'm just wondering, where do we go in terms of looking at math instruction? Um, what, are, what, are, what are next steps that we might see as a school committee and a community within the next, let's say, six to nine months? Well, we've already started the process with the DSAC people um, because we're not just um, using the DSAC people in the schools that are level three. Right. We're using it throughout the district. So we're looking at basically pre-K through 12 in mathematics, mm -hmm. um, but we're zeroing in on um, the grade levels at the elementary level uh, and into JFK primarily at this stage. Um, John Bianc, who is the um, DSAC representative in math, he has a stellar um, background in mathematics as both a teacher and an administrative department chair. And he's working with us. He will be back here. He was with us last Tuesday. He will be back, I think it's October 16th and November 3rd, if I remember correctly. And he'll be working with um, teachers from each of our buildings that we have designated along with some of our principals. Um, starting the curriculum mapping and looking at the alignment of our math curriculum with the state standards and the Common Core. And that needs to be done. Um, as you know, the Common Core has, although not officially adopted by the State Department of Education, I'm sure it will be, and we need to get on board and make sure that we have alignment because what they've done, particularly in math, is they've, they've narrowed the breadth right. and they added the depth. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that our grade levels are aligned. Um, and that work needs to be done by teachers, not by administrators and not by outside people, but teachers need to do that. So that's the process we're doing. We also feel that um, our curriculum for some of our students is too language-based and that we need to get some of the basics in um, that is not necessarily um, perhaps some of our students are not as gifted with language and with reading concepts at the grade levels that the math curriculum demands. So we need to supplement. And we will be meeting with John. Um, as a matter of fact, we're doing that also in about two weeks, um, talking about what are the other supplements we've been using in the district, how have they worked with certain, certain types of students, and how do we spread the wealth so that all of our schools have access to those. So I also think we, we've hired Nancy Cheevers to be full-time in curriculum and assessment. She starts next Monday, Tuesday. And um, I think that she's going to be instrumental as well in helping us do this. So I think we've got a plan. Um, DSAC's been wonderful. And um, I think we're just moving ahead trying to do this. I also want um, teachers to belong to the National Teachers of Math. I want them to um, get those journals, attend some of those conferences and meetings. Some of them are as close as Boston. Um, because I think that's an important way also to be on top of this. Okay. Mr. Moore. Yeah, I was wondering if um, this might not be something you know, but do you know the, what the, the, you know, the relative position of the math and English scores is statewide? Um, no, I don't. 
I'm just curious. I'm just curious if, if that if the difference in our scores is anomalous or if that's no I don't I, I don't know which is better but I I don't think they're as widely separated as ours are but I'm not sure what they are to be truthful I was going to ask in terms of Bridge Street's um, improvement and I obviously mm -hmm. want to give mm -hmm. uh, Principal Shoquette a lot of credit because yes. I know she and her staff have worked really hard Absolutely. to bring those scores up mm -hmm. how how um, how close what, what was what were the margin in terms of the level three versus level two status? Uh, I can't answer that. Okay. Just <coughs> but I will find you the answer. I just okay. don't have it. I just was clear. I mean, I know that there was improvements in all yes. areas. I just wasn't sure if it, how close it was. Um, and it may not, it may not, that may not even be a correct distinction. I, I don't know what the cutoffs are, but um, um, so, okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'll, I will get back to you on that. I just okay. don't know. Any other questions about the uh, results? Okay, well thank you very much for the report and obviously uh, school committee members will have a chance to review all these this da data you've provided. Um, the next report is on our district enrollment numbers, uh, the October 1st report. Um, and then accompanying that is a required vote uh, re uh, which involves a request for early childhood census data. So we'll begin with your presentation. Sure. Um, the um, October 1 count was distributed in your packets, and um, we're holding our own. I, I thought at our last meeting, it was early on in September, I thought we might be um, gaining significantly more students. We did not, but the good news is we didn't really lose any. So we are holding our own with regard to that. Um, as you can see, I think our class sizes are in good shape. Um, there's only one class that's 24. Um, there's a few 23, 22, et cetera. But I think that we've, we've done well with class sizes. Um, we have a total number of students uh, at the um, pre-K through five level of 1,231. We have a secondary total of 1,529. We have some students who receive services or are placed out of district of 64. So our total students <coughs> for our district is 2,824. But those attending our schools are 2,760. I believe last year we had 2,754. So it's a net gain of about six students. Um, and as you know, those numbers fluctuate through the year, but we use the October 1 count because that's what the state uses and bases our um, Chapter 70 money on and, and other statistics. So we always use the, the October 1 uh, count. But, um, you know, like so many of our school districts in the area, there is fluctuation with people moving in and out uh, on a pretty regular basis. The second sheet um, is with regard to school choice and student and resident student enrollment for this year. Um, I think you can see there that um, we have student and we only have school choice versus resident. And um, if you look, you can see that our school choice numbers are uh, ranging from a low of 11 students in school choice from Jackson Street to a high of 82 at the high school. But realize when they get to the high school, it doesn't mean you had 82 openings. <coughs> they rise up through the other schools, the other grade levels into the high school. Um, so your numbers there um, basically, I think, are, are well in keeping with what you, you need to do and, and your class size numbers. Uh, and I know that every April you probably make that decision with regard to where you have openings in your schools for school choice. Um, you certainly have students who are in private schools and you also have students who are in the so-called public charter schools. Um, and I do not have those counts, but they're certainly out there. Um, Hilltown Charter is the biggest one, I think, that receives your students. I think something around 89 students go there. And um, PVPA um, is another one. Um, so you, you do, and the Chinese uh, Immersion um, School. 
So you do have students who go to those schools as well. Excuse me, I can't mm -hmm. hear you. What did I'm you sorry. say about the Chinese summer object? Your voice you, have, you have three charter schools. They're called um, public charter schools where we have students as well. Um, and that would be the Hilltown Charter School, the PVPA, the Performing Arts School, and the Chinese Immersion School. So those numbers um, are not contained in this. And last but not least, um, Barbara Black, our early childhood um, school um, coordinator, um, I understand requests each year at this time uh, since she needs to request census data from the city of Northampton Registra and in order to get that we need an official vote from the school committee. Obviously we use that in terms of planning for the future years. Um, so we need a motion? So we need a motion to, to approve a request for early childhood census data second. Okay. Uh, so again, this is uh, for folks at home. This is to actually make a formal request to the city clerk to provide us with the census data. Primarily, we're probably talking about households with children, preschool, uh, and preschool age children in the city. Any uh, discussion about the motion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Any abstentions? <coughs> okay. So the motion carries. The next item on the agenda is the uh, fiscal year 13 budget closeout and uh, turn it over to Mr. McLaughlin. Um, in front of you tonight, you have a hard copy on legal paper and uh, landscape format. This, uh, legal, this legal paper that has here, it's a spreadsheet that is used for the FY13 closeout. Um, this is an accounting um, requirement that we do for our outside auditors. They uh, have asked us to do this, and we have done this in the past years. Uh, we've done this over the last four or five years. And basically, this is just balancing out the accounts um, to zero out by category. As you know, when we approve the budget, we approve it at a, as a, uh, a bottom line budget. but to get to that bottom line, we build our accounts by DOE structures and different categories. So the column headings you see there that say the 1,000 accounts, the 2,000, 3,000, well, <coughs> those are groupings that the Department of Ed uses uh, to capture our expenses as we go through the year, and that's the way we build our budget. So they all total up at the, at the very end to be our $24 million budget. So this particular spreadsheet, uh, even though we, uh, during the course of the year, some accounts will be under on, some will be a little bit over on. The auditor has asked us to balance those out. So if in a perfect world, we spent all the dollars exactly in the categories uh, as defined by the Department of Ed, they've asked us to do an accounting adjustment to balance out those accounts. So what this sheet is doing is it's a check and a balance to exactly how we spent our monies. We know how much money we spent, but what this is doing is balancing it out by the Department of Ed categories. It doesn't change our uh, ending dollars of where we ended the year. It doesn't change how we spent our monies or in what areas, but this is a check and a balance that the auditors have asked us to put together so each particular category under the DOE alignment of accounts is balanced. So this is um, the same type of a sheet that you've seen in past years. It's an accounting sheet. Um, you see, you don't see a lot of descriptions of everything here. It's just moving monies between accounts to meet the outside auditor's requirements and to balance within DOE account structures. So does this uh, require any sort of a formal vote of the school committee yeah, the, to effectuate the these transfers? The firm asked to vote because it does zero out when you go across the top of the page. It does zero out and they just ask for formality's sake to have a vote so we do tie according to the DOE requirements. Okay. So is this again, to accept this 
accept this or approve it or approve authorize this it as or approve this as it balances out the um, accounts according to the Department of Ed structure, accounting structure. But, but we are technically making transfers within the FY13 budget. Correct. They're just, we're move, but we're moving, the bottom line's the same, we're just moving between different silos, Department Correct. of Ed silos. So, yes. so it is actually a, an order asking to. Okay, so move I move approval the of the budgetary transfers as listed on the second. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? Any questions? Um, okay. Um, hearing no discussion, all those in favor of these uh, transfers say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So those uh, transfers are made. Thank you. The next item uh, is a review of the NPS capital planning process. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin again. Thank you. Also in front of you tonight, you have a hard copy of the capital project summaries as they're listed for the school department. The list that you have in front of you has been put together by the school administration and has been put together by the central services department. Um, the if you look down the page, you see many projects listed by school. The, the biggest, the, the top three are on there is technology uh, related type projects. Then you see it broken up for high school and then the lead school in Jackson and Ryan. And you see the projects that are listed uh, after the initials or the, the name of the school. Um, some of these projects are still projects that have carried over from last year and some from the year before. So as you know, these projects do get funded out of free cash at the end of the year. So when the outside auditors come in and they audit our books and they declare a certain dollar value of free cash that becomes available to the city, um, then the city finance director and mayor determine of the free cash where the funds go, that some could go into stabilization, some could go into capital improvements and other type accounts. Right now we are in the FY15 budget year for planning for capital projects. If you remember last year we had capital planning project approvals and by virtue of change of the city charter, we did two years worth of capital approvals last year to get us on par and get us to be in sync with the uh, capital improvement cycle by virtue of the charter. So this year, um, as some projects remained from last year and even the year before, some of these have been estimates from vendors, some have been uh, calculated by central services to give, get us uh, figures that are well representative for the costs of these various projects. Um, these projects have been reviewed. Uh, the projects are uh, being put forward on this sheet again uh, for this upcoming planning process. Uh, they've been prioritized by fiscal year to the best of our knowledge of where we think they fall over the next five year capital planning cycle. So obviously if you look in the first year of 2015, there's $1.1 million worth of proposed capital projects. Our capital projects are also in a pool with the rest of the city, whether it is the police department, fire department, DPW. So there's a greater need for the entire city for capital needs. This is just the school department needs and these projects have been submitted in much greater detail. You just have the summary sheet here tonight. But they go to the Capital Planning Committee uh, in which uh, Mr. Stachowski and I sit on and review uh, for the rest of the city. So we listen to all the projects being presented and then the Capital Planning Committee uh, will review and present to the mayor based on all the data submitted 
which projects should be funded first and the priority of those projects as we move forward as a school department and as a city. So the projects that are here by virtue of central services and uh, the administration prioritized what we thought was going to be the most needy <coughs> and which ones need to be uh, tackled first. So I also wanted to make sure that you saw these projects and just wanted to hear from you folks as to your thoughts you know, or any input on this list. I think the superintendent wanted to add some comments to that before we open it up. Okay. Um, I just would like to um, speak to two that I feel very strongly about, one being student and school safety projects, um, both at uh, two of our schools. And I don't want to get into a lot of detail because obviously they're safety related. But I do feel that there is a need at two of our schools, um, as indicated on this sheet, that we expend some money in terms of security um, for our students. We live in a very different day and age than we have in the past. And uh, I think we need to pay attention to those issues. So I would urge um, the community, the, the Capital Planning Committee, and whoever else is uh, concerned about this, um, coming up with this list to look at those student and school safety items. The second one I'd like to speak to is technology. And um, I was sort of surprised to find out that our schools are not wireless. There are a few hot spots, but um, you really need to have the <coughs> infrastructure in place um, before you go down the road trying to find all the uh, bells and whistles to go in your schools because they're not going to work very well. So you really need to pay attention to the wireless upgrades and get those in place because you really you need to move forward with the whole issue of integrating technology into the curriculum. It's very difficult to do that if you've only got certain rooms in which you have a wireless connection. Um, so having been through this last year and having um, wireless added to schools where I was the superintendent, um, I think the figure here is very low. So I have asked Mark to talk with our technology person to make sure, um, and I've not had the chance to do so, to make sure that that infrastructure is an important one to have um, considered uh, in the projects. Other uh, comments or questions about, uh, about this? Yes. I just um, want to say that I, I um, agree with the superintendent that those are the two priorities that I also had once spoken with her about and two, um, I, I definitely agree that we need to focus on the security and the technology. So I just wanted to reiterate that also. And I do have a question about rubber ceilings, rubber roofs. Mm -hmm. um, they all need to be replaced. Are we replacing them with another rubber roof? Is it, this, I mean, they're, they're, they only carry a guarantee for so many years. Right. And I'm assuming, although I don't know for sure, that they're putting these in the order in which the guarantees are approximately up so that they can be resealed and or replaced. Am I correct in that, Mark? Yes. Uh, the, rubber, the rubber roofs are a membrane, <coughs> and they can vary in thickness, and they get rolled out over the existing roof. Uh, we do have some buildings that do have rubber membrane roofs. Uh, they are sealed and bonded when the edges come together. Mm -hmm. uh, they're put over the buildings. They mm -hmm. uh, work very well, but just like anything else, they're exposed to the sun, the temperature, and the changes. Uh, some of the buildings, even on the existing rubber roofs that we have now, uh, do need to have maintenance on them and patchwork and crack repairs. And as the roofs continue to age, um, we will need to replace that rubber roof that's currently on there. Whether they lay over the top of it, that's a structural engineer decision. Uh, whether they take one off and put another one on, that would be part of the specs w when and if these projects do get approved. Okay, so there's four different schools that, that require that. So are we doing it on a rotating basis? I mean, for all four of them to come up at the same time? Or is the, the money that 
the costs reflect the square foot or reflect that it the you know the it has to have something different done to it. I just don't understand why they would. I mean, I do understand. I mean, why they're all. I don't understand why four of them are coming up now. I mean, how long uh, do they last? They're under different years of okay. capital plan. So let, let's just pick one. Say for Leeds, for example. Uh, for example, they have that spread out, and primarily because if you pack that all together, that becomes a half a million dollar roofing project, which is very large. And with the availability of cash that becomes available, that gets authorized and approved, it's better to replace certain portions of the roof that are the most damaged or in the most need of repair. Um, and it's all calculated on square foot and cost of square footage. And also with the amount of uh, roof venting, ducting, piping, and flashing that's up there, uh, many of this is in the, the back the piles and piles of information uh, to get to a reasonable figure of what that would be. But to try to put all the roofs together would be a phenomenal project to try to have it all in one year. Okay, and so with that in mind, I see very high, high, and medium. So have some of these been on the, the have not been done, but are on the list from like last year or something, and then they move up? Do we have a chance of getting any of these mediums actually met? Um, last year, we some of these items here last year were in 2015. Some of them that did not happen in 2014, we just pushed them out to 15, or we reevaluated those particular projects to say, can we repair partially and get another four or five years out of a project, or do we need to do this immediately? So, in the eyes of uh, the uh, vendors or the the engineers or the quotes that were taken um, in the severity of uh, of each of the needs um, they were given very high high medium low um, but even though all of these are very high projects we still have to choose somewhere between these of the prioritization of which one is even higher than very high Right, which goes to the other half of my question of, of having mediums on the list. Is it realistic that we're going to actually hit any of those as goals? Honestly, if you I see would honestly, so are we putting them there so that next year we can say, yes. look, they've been on the list and now we're well, moving we keep up them and they, they go up in, in right. value and priority as the years go by, and also to keep our eye on it. Yes. Yes. Right, something. they're there for awareness' sake because okay. they've been assessed. They know that there will be a need out in future years to put it out there now so you can see the plan and know where it falls in the planning process. Okay, and then another question. Um, didn't we have, um, already get some of the money for the technology? I thought we had a $300,000 figure floating around and we already received some of it. And you are correct. Okay. The technology plan was originally presented as a $300,000 project. Right. As it was uh, looked at by the Capital Planning Committee, uh, that particular project in with police, fire, DPW projects uh, and try to balance out the needs across the city, um, we were asked to take that $300,000 and split it up. We looked at it and split it up into three s specific chunks, 100000 each year for three years. So we have received monies uh, in the first year of 100000 and in the second year of 100000 Right now, this <coughs> is the last hundred thousand dollars that would complete the three hundred thousand upgrade of infrastructure and backbone in the system some wiring and in a variety of other things uh, that are needed uh, platform development of the systems and, and that oh NPS okay I was thinking NHS okay never mind on that and then um, with all of this coming to the capital campaign um, or funding are we supposed to be lobbying I mean what what makes them care more about the schools than than um, the fire or whatever. Are we supposed to be lobbying? Is this where we go and say, "Come on, we need you"? And I've had constituents ask me about that. Actually, um, the capital planning meetings are public meetings. Um, the school department will be presenting on November sixth. Um, everything you see on this list will go in front of the committee. If you wish to come to that meeting and and talk about these projects. They will be talked about in their very specific 
uh, nature and in specific narrative. So there will be a number of people around the table that will be able to answer very narrow specific questions about any of these projects. Uh, but if you wish to come and speak to the committee and lobby on behalf of the school, please, um, it's, it's an open session meeting for anybody who wants to attend. And it, you know, and it won't hurt. We could write our counselors beforehand, or uh, we could also write our counselors to, to let them know what, what we want. Well, I, I, I actually called the mayor's office, and I have the, the breakdowns and the specifics, and that's what made me wonder about um, the priorities and the mediums and whether or not we're just putting them there so that we m mark them. Um, the way that the process goes, and I'll look at the mayor if he wants to uh, add in at, at the end, is the committee will review all projects. The committee then will go upon a weighted system uh, af after November 6. We will evaluate every project that's been brought forward to the committee. We'll have some kind of an idea at that point about how much money would be available uh, to fund capital projects. Um, that gets determined after the end of the year uh, gets closed, the city books are closed, the auditor gives us a range, the city finance director will bring that number forward. She sits on the committee, uh, this capital planning committee. Then we prioritize how these projects fit into that dollar amount. So whether it's a half a million or a million and a half, we would look at all the projects that came forward evaluate them on a particular criteria and prioritize where the need is. So the committee then takes that and turns that as a recommendation to the mayor. The mayor then, it's, we've done our job as a committee saying this is how we prioritize the projects and then it goes to the mayor and then the mayor can present that to the city council and I believe you have the option to modify or change at that point? That's correct. Yeah, the commit the CIC is a recommend makes a recommendation to me, um, and actually the charter has the one of the other changes in the charter now is instead of uh, I'm now required every year 120 days prior to the start of the new fiscal year to present a five year plan to the city council, um, which is a five year so every year we'll be formally updating a five year plan. And, uh, and the city council has to hold a hearing on it and vote on it. They're not voting the actual funding, they're just voting that we do have a five-year plan for capital. Um, and then when I submit my actual budget, in this case for FY15, we'll include funding for a cap for capital plan within that budget. Um, so the recommendations don't always match exactly what the committee gave, but I mean, I think the important thing to understand is if you look at these columns, uh, you know, our, our total capital plan for the entire city is averaged about a million to a million and a quarter to a million and a half over the last few years. So I'm looking at some of these columns um, so you can understand that it will be difficult for us to fund everything on this list. And we've tended to have, I forgot what the total universe is of total capital projects. It's you know 40 to 50 to 60 million dollars for the city, um, and we have about a million to a million and a half each year to work with. So there's so, but again, what we want to do is is constantly be looking at what our capital infrastructure needs and prioritizing them, um, even though in some cases we know not all of them are going to be able to get funded. Um, but we need to constantly be looking at it, and now it's actually a requirement of the charter that we have this constant five-year plan that we're updating. Ms. Pick, you had a question. Can I finish oh. my question? <coughs> sure the can. The last part of the question is, um, so if people do come on November 6th, is it an open forum? Can they ask questions at the beginning? I mean, how, what, are they able to participate in some way? I, I believe they I believe they can, but I can get yeah, there, a there, definite answer yeah. from you. There would there you. there would be public comment is is required at all of our meetings. So you I don't, I'm not sure that the public generally comes to those meetings, but I know actually I think that there have been residents in the past that have come for specific neighborhood type projects. I know some stormwater projects we've had people come specifically for, um, but th they're. If there's public there, the chair sh should and will allow time for public comment. Okay, and um, public comment or interaction? I mean, where I have a question and then it gets answered, whereas here we don't. I mean, so 
uh, again, this is, uh, I, I guess I'd need to defer to the, the rules of, the, of that particular committee. I don't know that it's that interactive, but I suppose it depends on the size of the folks that are there, um, the, the size of the crowd that's there and what time allows. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess what I would say of being part of the committee is that um, we will have people from the school department come in and speak to the needs as identified as the high priority. And, um, you know, we trust that the people that come in and speak uh, about those projects will do it in a way in which it will be compelling and convincing to the uh, committee so that they would rank it in a high level in order to bring it to um, uh, the mayor for consideration. So um, as far as other people coming and speaking on behalf of um, these projects, uh, it's been my experience that it's really left up to the person that would be coming that evening to speak about the technology plan or the um, the safety concerns that we have in regards to uh, keeping our buildings uh, safe and locked at all times. So, um, you know, that's kind of been the way that it's happened in the past. I don't think there's a lot of uh, public comment from the outside saying, yeah, we really support this, um, but it's really been at the hands of the, the school department people. That well, I'm asking because of, uh, specifically I have somebody who, who was just asking me actually today as far as what they were going <coughs> to do and were concerned about the safety and was talking about the meeting on November 6th and wasn't sure whether or not going mattered at that point because it's a list and it's already presented if she actually gets to say anything or not. That was the concern and I'm hoping other people, if they have concerns, have the forum to, sit, uh, to come and state so also. I think it, historically the um, the committee has always looked at uh, public and student safety as a high priority and concern. Also, um, we really pay attention to roofs, you know, although uh, 130 or 150,000 sounds expensive for a roof. When the water gets in and the damage occurs, you know, that exponentially goes up. So um, capital improvements would certainly want to make a recommendation to the mayor that we keep up with maintenance and make sure that our roofs are keeping water and ice out. Uh, to really uh, curb any major damages that could happen once water got in. And that goes for heating as well. I mean, those are a couple of really big things that have always come up periodically and that the, the uh, committee pays particular attention to because they can be the most damaging <coughs> to our, our building and structure throughout the city. Thank you very much. Sorry, Ms. Pick. Ms. Pick. A two-part question. You answered the, the first part. The, so this presentation is on November 6th? Yes. Okay. So generally in past years, it's um, uh, we've had real li lively debate about prioritizing these projects in budget and property. That has that did not happen this year, is that correct? Because generally as budget and property comes and presents and why things are prioritized and it kind of answers a lot of the questions ahead of time for the, the committee. Um, I would guess it didn't happen because they didn't know that's how it worked. <laughs> okay. So I'm just, I'm just clarifying kind of why they're, I mean, this is the first time we're seeing the list and budget and property hasn't kind of gone over and, and prioritized the way we ha often have in the past. And I think, I think the superintendent said it pretty well when she said you look at the mediums and things like that, they're really on there, I wouldn't say to fill the paper up, but really to be on there so they're, keep an eye on to keep an eye on them. Yeah, it's a five-year plan. But, but really they're not the ones that um, will come before the committee as as a consideration for that year and so um, I think a few years ago um, Superintendent Salzer identified technology as being a really uh, important item and so we're still in we're in the third year of that three-year plan we want to get that hundred thousand dollars and as the mayor said you know anywhere between 1.3 and 1.5 is what's being allowed for the entire city so if we get that hundred thousand um, dollars that you know will be a big chunk of what the mayor might be looking at to give the school so, department. So, uh, and no argument, and as, a, as I was on budget and property when we discussed all of that when it came through, and we were very excited when that, when that got put into the plan, um, given that that is going to end, I would think that f um, in the next year it's going to be important for budget and, pro and property to prioritize now that there are so many other different kinds of projects coming up, not all of which will be able to be met in any given year. Any other uh, questions? Yeah, I have a comment. I, I don't think this is the place for this discussion, but um, I, I, I have a concern that, um, particularly with the 
on this list, the, the, um, the security-related things, uh, there's some cameras and the doors and things. <coughs> um, it seems like we haven't really had it. I've been on the committee now for almost three years, and we haven't really had a discussion of what we, th what we want in the way of physical security for our schools. In terms, because, I mean, I think there's, there's a whole world of things <laughs> that get involved in when you talk about you know, physically safe schools. And um, we haven't had that conversation, and we, and we certainly haven't had any sort of a pub, you know, formal public discussion of what, what do we think would be ideal, what do we think would be more than <laughs> worse. You know, I, mean, I imagine most people have an idea that at some point security would be too much security. People obviously have some idea of what's not enough, and that probably is pretty different for different people, depending on their experience. And, all their experiences, but that we haven't ever really had that discussion of sort of trying to sort of figure out where we think that point of optimal physical security is, and um, I'm a little uncomfortable, I, and I think, I don't think we're crossing that with any of these items on this list, but it seems to me that at some point we need to actually have that policy discussion as opposed to simply having, um, having it be just sort of as part of a um, capital projects Discussion only. I, would say in regards to I don't think now is the time for that discussion. True. I think the ones that are on here are the ones that we're just trying to uh, bring into the school system that are the most important. For example, at the mm -hmm. high school, when you walk into the high school front door, you can walk right into the into building. The building. We yes. want to be able to stop people before they get into the building and make sure that they're there for the right reason right. before they get to detain them before they can <laughs> yeah. make, uh, make a break into the school. And so those are the ones we're oh, talking yeah. about. I mean, we want to have a school system that has locked doors at all points of entry, knowing that at any given time a, uh, a foot peg could be put in a door and a door could be right. left ajar. But we really want to make sure that all those doors are secure. And right now we don't have that throughout the, the district. Oh, I understand that. No, no, and I'm, and I'm not, that's why I'm not saying that. I, I think there's a, but there is a broader discussion, which I hope we will be have, have, um, to have sometime. Mr. Moore, from my limited experiences here, um, these are the items that the principals uh, have been discussing with me. Um, there is nothing new on here that we don't have in most of our schools. We're trying to bring all the schools up to the same level of safety and security that some of them are. So I guess my supposition was at some point there was that discussion because some of your schools have cameras, some of your schools have buzz-in systems. So um, I, I think the feeling of the principals are transferred into this because they feel very strongly that they want their school, whichever one it is, to be at the same level of safety as all the other schools in the district. So we're not looking to do anything that's um, um, either on the fringe group of, um, you know, frisking students as they go through the doors or any of that stuff, but we do feel that there are certain needs that we have, um, for instance, telephones and classrooms and things of that nature, which not all of our schools have. So I agree at some point. I think that would be a very good discussion for the board, but I just want to assure you, as Ed did, that there's nothing on here that you don't have in some of your schools on there. Right, I hoped I, I, I thought I made that clear when I started by saying, yeah. I don't think it's time for that discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm not, but it, but it, right. So I do want to make sure we have. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. so are there any other comments about the, uh, about the CIP um, summary? Okay, uh, hearing none, we can now move to the uh, business manager's report. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin. Um, as part of your packet that was emailed to you as uh, my monthly oh. business manager report and some of the items uh, that are on here, at least the note noteworthy items, uh, the district has uh, uh, munis-wise, computer and system-wise has uh, been uh, uh, to the point where we are almost closed, so we were able to upload the FY14 budget uh, into the Muni system, and that's why this month you have a financial report that represents the first quarter of the fiscal year, which is July, August, and September. Um, as a uh, part of that noteworthy item, um, the Muni software, um, we've gone to a new version for the entire city, 
and we've also gone to a version that's out in the cloud. So um, that was one of the upgrades that was being done on capital projects from last year that was approved so we could move forward and move out and get into the cloud. Um, there are a lot of uh, improvements because we were able to do that. Under contracts, one of the capital projects from last year that was approved was uh, the glycol uh, freeze protection. That's one that came off of the project list from last year because it was approved. And this is one of those that, again, it's uh, uh, a building project that hit very high needs because if you remember, we had uh, two months where we had frozen pipes <coughs> popping and breaking at the high school because of the lack of temperature uh, freeze protection. And uh, this year, um, that is being installed. It should be installed next week. They're going to break the system down and put new glycol into the system to prevent that. So that project is moving forward, and that's happening. Uh, food service. Uh, in the month of September, we had more pa parents pay through my school bucks than any other month we've had. Now, we've been on my school bucks now for about a year and a half. Um, I think parents are becoming more familiar with the system. Uh, they're realizing the ease in which they can make online payments. And uh, right now, through my school bucks, we've had 601 different families use the online school bucks program whether it was to pay for their child's lunch or whether it was to go in and monitor to see what their child had been eating that day. Um, so there are inquiries. So we've had 601 users of that system. I'm 601, so I'm, <laughs> I'm one of them. Uh, the last part of my report was the capital planning process. Again, November 6th is when the school department will be presenting the list of capital items to the capital committee. One quick question on the budget. I'm just kind of looking through the big ticket items on here. And I noticed that um, you know, generally we're somewhere between 10 and 15 percent expended, which is normal for this time of year. But on non-public um, tuition, it's 6.9 percent. Do we have fewer students or um, less ex fewer expenses for those students, or is it are we just not is it? No. Uh, you should see historically um, Does that climb it'll be yet? low because that only really represents one month. We didn't really okay, have so summer. high okay. payments and August payments for uh, most of our students. We just had the September payments, and that's really what you're seeing right there. So that's there should be, be more on this list. Um, the encumbrance side of the Muni system had not been updated, but we have encumbered a number of uh, annual contracts for students who are going out of district. So that number would have been maybe 8 percent, 10 percent, but uh, you'll see that catch up next month. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Zahowski. Uh, just one question. I'm looking at your, um, your business manager's report here under contracts. You have the Tri-State Technologies for 17000 the annual maintenance contract. And yes. On our contract transfer and approvals is listed as 15,000 uh, let me look could, could have just been uh, I'm wondering which one it is and I'm, I have to have a disclaimer when I go home tonight I, I will be asked about it because well it could have been my magic fingers um, <laughs> And it was. On my business manager report, it was my magic fingers. I made it 17. It is actually 15. So on the contract you will sign later, it is 15. Somehow that became a typo as I was putting my uh, report together. Thanks for the clarification. Uh, yes. You had stated that the, um, the glycol for the freeze protection was actually on the capital um, list from last year. How many years was that on, and was it on medium to high, or, I mean, did it just come on, or? Last year it came on, um, and it came on immediately, uh, part of it being that we didn't realize that how fast the glycol, the potency of the glycol was being depleted, and with the amount of breakages in the system, 
Uh, we lost a lot of glycol besides. So the combination of the two, um, I think rose uh, the heightenedness in awareness that this is a huge priority um, just to make sure that building is cooling properly and heating properly. Okay. And it just came on last year. It wasn't like it was sitting on for four or five years. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, questions about the business manager's report? Hearing none, we'll hear the personnel report. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back at it again. Okay, uh, personnel report uh, was emailed to you uh, in your packet. As you can see, we had 17 new hires. We had uh, seven separations. We've had uh, two individuals retire, and we've had four people either transfer or receive promotions uh, during the month of September. <coughs> okay, any questions about the personnel report? Okay, hearing none, we can then move on to the superintendent report. Right. I have three items under my report this evening. First of all, an update on the uh, late start schedule. Um, I have been meeting with school personnel. I've had three such meetings. Uh, I have also promised to meet with interested community group, and I will be doing that. Uh, and I expect to have a schedule ready for either the November or December school committee meeting. Um, but the effective date will be for September of 2014. Um, I have to say, based on my experience and the information that I've gathered here to date, that I'm reasonably sure that the late start schedule change for the high school will also mean changes for both the elementary and the middle school uh, as well. So that's one of the reasons I'd like to get this to the school committee early, because I think the parents need to do their planning uh, at all of the grade levels uh, for September of 2014. And if you're going to go through a new change, it's better to do it at the beginning of the year and not to dump it into the middle of a year when you've got winter weather, you've got darkness, and you've already got routines established in all the schools in all the households of kids who go there. So this schedule will be for September of 2014, uh, and I think you will see that it will mandate some changes. Second item is with regard to MASC, MASS, the annual conference. I spoke to you about it at the last meeting. Uh, I have one taker. Uh, Blue is going to be going, uh, and I would love to have someone else go as well. So would I. So, so if we've got someone interested in that conference, please let me know. We happen to have copies um, of the information with us this evening in case you didn't receive one in the mail. I know Laura brought some. And yes? We don't have another school, well, we may have meetings, but we don't really have other an official school committee meeting before, before this. No. This so do we need nine. to elect a de voting delegate if we're going to send one? Sounds good to me. Sure, you can do that. Hmm? In the past, we've discussed the issues and, <laughs> and you know, talked about how we might want our delegate to vote for us. I don't know what the issues are. I didn't receive anything this year, which I normally do, but I have not. No, they, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't discuss, I didn't receive anything about I thought the big thing came, yeah that thing <laughs> came out that yeah man. there you go I didn't get it so I don't know the issues um, it's up to the board if you wish to vote a delegate you can do so if you don't wish to vote one that's it's a bit of a challenge because we did it not is. have it as a part of our posted agenda so unless you can convince me that we didn't know this was going to happen within 48 hours it's I'm gonna be hard-pressed to, to allow you to vote on it so is it something that could be uh, placed on the agenda at a future meeting between now and November? There won't be a future meeting between now and the special meeting. So I there don't be think special meetings. There are not going to be special meetings between now and then. Not for this purpose, no. There will only be one special meeting that I'm aware of coming up. Um, well, we you know, add, I don't think this is the end the agenda of the world. Then? Asking to be truthful, this is not the end of the world. These are some um, proposals that school committees are putting forth um, at the Massachusetts Association of School Committee members uh, as well as superintendents. And um, there are discussions, and only those people so voted by their school committee may have a vote at those meetings. 
um, certainly um, Blue or anyone else is able to participate in the discussion, they just can't vote. And since you've not had time to discuss the issues being presented, and in fact, I don't know that we know what they are, um, you probably don't want to vote a delegate, and I think the mayor has a very good point, it's not on the agenda. So it does not present a problem in terms of attendance at the meeting, it's just that you would not be able to cast a vote on the issues. And I don't know if we have anyone else interested in going. I would hope so, but I don't see any takers. I hear Hyannis is lovely in November. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Um, okay. And I have one other item, and that is, as I mentioned at the last meeting, with regard to legal services, uh, I have received proposals for legal services for um, the current school year, and I um, talked to the mayor about this. So I would like to request that the chair and the vice chair, if willing, would join me in making um, uh, and interviewing the firms who have submitted proposals and making a recommendation to the full board at its next meeting. Um, if you are available and I'm sure we can work a time around mm -hmm. okay so that would be on the docket for the next meeting okay, okay. and that's all I have okay um, so that completes the superintendent's report the next item on the agenda is the uh, update on the superintendent search and I will turn that over to um, Miss Pick and uh, have her give that update so um, the superintendent screening committee, there were 12 of us that we were named at the, at the last meeting, um, have um, finished our, our task. I just again want to thank the committee uh, for their time and um, um, appreciate, um, I think this was a, a great group. I think we worked well together. I think we were efficient. Um, we had um, lively debate and um, are forwarding to you three um, finalist candidates. Um, as you know, we had a pool of 16 from which we selected six to interview, and we have um, forwarded three. And so I'm going to tell you just a little bit about them. You have um, a, some pa uh, a packet in front of you with their um, information, um, listing them by alphabetical order. So the first one is um, Lori Farkas. This is somebody who is known to us in the district. She is um, our Director of Student Services here and has been since August of 2012. Before that, she was the Director of Pupil Services at Hampshire Regional for six years and has a background as a middle school and elementary principal and holds a Master's in Educational Administration. The second candidate we're forwarding is John Johnson. He is currently the Communications Director for the State Superintendent Office in Wisconsin. He's been there since 2003. He's also a college instructor in educational leadership. Prior to this position, he was um, the Assistant Principal at a high school in Madison, Wisconsin. We've heard Madison, uh, Wisconsin before. He was there for five years. Um, and he has a background at, in elementary, middle school, and high school as a teacher. He um, was an elementary special ed teacher, a middle school ELA teacher, a high school social studies teacher, and he holds a doctorate in educational leadership and policy analysis. The third candidate is Timothy Lee. He is currently an elementary principal in Lenox, Mass, and has been since 2008. Before that, he was a principal of an elementary school in Norfolk, uh, Norfolk Connecticut for five years. He, before that, was an um, assistant or an interim um, principal in a middle school in Madison, Wisconsin. Something about that one. <laughs> um, and has a background as a Spanish teacher in middle school and high school, is bilingual with Spanish, and holds a master's in educational leadership. All three candidates have um, been spoken to by um, Joe Wood and have agreed to accept, obviously, or they wouldn't be here, um, becoming <coughs> candidates. And so now we have to talk about next steps. Um, so there are a couple of things um, that we need to decide. You've got an email about saving a date. Um, um, so what we would like to do is invite the three candidates to all come out on the same day, and they're going to be rotated throughout the district the way we did two and a half years ago, where they get to see all the schools, meet our administrators, meet with some faculty, with some parents, um, have a very long day touring the city, learning everything they can, and 
asking lots of questions and, and speaking a lot. And at the end of all of that, then they get to come here and have a, um, an interview with all of us in front of the TV. It's a long, long day for them. It requires an enormous amount of scheduling on the part of central office and our administrators. It's a, um, a hard day, but it's, it's one that, um, that is really re very important because we want to learn as much about them as we can and we want them to see as much of us as they can to make sure that we are a good fit. So we need to talk about um, the uh, date that we are going to invite them. Um, obviously we have somebody who's coming from quite a distance and needs to make arrangements and so we need to get to him as soon as possible and um, um, Acting Superintendent has said that she will be making uh, making calls um, starting tomorrow to arrange that. Um, the other thing that we need to decide is um, how much we want to include Joe Wood in our future processes. Um, he <coughs> is um, willing and available to be with us um, for, for two different purposes, if we so desire. Um, when we did this process a while ago, the full school committee met with him in executive session and we um, wrote out interview questions with his guidance, this much the same way the screening committee did um, for the, our first set of interviews. We still have those questions. Um, we can, we need to as a group get together and review them and see if those are questions that we still think are relevant or if we want to rewrite or revise and edit in them in any way. And he needs to know if we would like him to be present to help us with that process. And also he needs to know if we want him to be um, present on the day that we do our, our interviews. Um, last time around we did not have him here. We managed um, quite fine and he is not saying that he feels he needs to be here but he's willing to be here if we, we feel it would be important for him uh, or if we feel any need for that. And then the other question that um, has come up, he has asked, um, if the um, Northampton School Department will be covering any travel expenses for candidates. Um, we were asked this last time, we declined that, um, but it is a question that we need to um, agree on as a group. Again, we have somebody who would be coming from Wisconsin, somebody from Western Mass, and somebody who's fairly local. So um, are there Questions, uh, comments, particularly about that specific question. You're looking for specific guidance on. We need a specific answer for Joe, okay. and he, he's he's waiting to hear from me actually um, tonight after our meeting about the answers to all of these questions because he needs to schedule and we need to come up with dates and let him know if he's expected to be here. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Ball. Okay. Um, so for dates. The two that we were sent, the 23rd and the 24th, are those still the two dates that you're looking at, that we're looking at, or is it, because on the 23rd, mm -hmm. there's a debate that's already been scheduled at Bridge Street School, and I'd really like to be part of this, first of all, so. The, the problem we're running into is um, on almost any date we're going to choose, um, someone probably will have another commitment and there is, as you know, next week is a short week because of uh, uh, Monday being a holiday. So there's no way that we can arrange to do all of this next week. So it has to be the following week. And I started basically checking with the mayor's agenda with his secretary um, to find out when he would be available as chair. I think that's important that the chair be present. Um, and the date of October 23rd was a better date than October 24th. So uh, I've sort of settled on October 23rd. Um, there was also a conflict um, with uh, another um, school committee member who's been able to um, have an earlier meeting and then come to ours, and that was Ed. Um, I don't know what to tell you. If, if you all want to sit here and try to come up with a mutual date, including three people who aren't here that everyone can attend I'm happy to entertain that but I don't know if I don't know if we can do it well I'm really concerned also that um, and I've stated this before that I'm not sure if it's the amount of money we're offering or whatnot but I don't see that any of these have previous experience as superintendents and we're talking about our educational leader and that's a concern a very big concern 
So and I also don't believe that we should pay for the man to come all the way from Wisconsin. I think that if he wants the job, that that's part of the, 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 the whole deal of looking for a job. Um, and also, one of the concerns that we had was high of locality, of wanting somebody to come and somebody to stay and somebody to commit. And if it's an issue for him to come out and apply for the job um, without him taking an investment, I just don't think we're in a financial situation to do that. But I'm really, I just off the bat, I think that we should have a superintendent that has superintendent experience. Okay. So, but for tonight, we can't really get right. into the evaluative process. So, right. so in terms of the travel expenses, um, it was a question that I had to ask. We did have a candidate who came from Wisconsin last time around. We did not pay for those expenses. Okay. Um, it's certainly not written into our budget, and it wouldn't be my thought that we would offer okay. that, but I, it was a question that I had to ask and, and get consensus. So, are, com are people comfortable uh, maintaining our? past practice in this regard it sounds like I'm seeing heads nod and and so um, so if that has been the past practice then it sounds like folks are comfortable staying with that um, in, in, it, it's not the place tonight to discuss the qualifications of the candidates mm -hmm. um, people haven't had a time time to thoroughly um, look at this um, these candidates have all been met by the um, screening committee they were all deemed worthy to come forward we were not sending candidates forward just for the sake of filling slots. And I would ask people to have an open mind in meeting candidates. And after the evaluative process and interviewing, um, if the school committee does not feel that they want to uh, just um, ask one of these people to be our superintendents, that is our prerogative to do that. But this would not be the place to be, to the time to be discussing that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, what I do need to know is, are we going to, um, do we feel a need to, for an, an additional meeting next week to work on um, interview questions, or do we f um, want to review the questions that we had last time and meet, you know, I, I, I hate to leave it just to, to the night of the interview, and, you know, an executive session before that in case, in case there is, um, work that we need to do. I personally think that we need to have a meeting to review the questions as a committee. Um, it may be a short meeting if we're comfortable with the questions that we had and don't feel like there's a lot of need for revision, but um, generally we like to be, you know, last time we were very organized, we knew who was going to ask which questions so that it would be the same for each candidate. Um, so I do think that we need to have an executive session next week in order to review those. Okay. Um, and so we need to find a date for that. And I think that we were asked to hold two dates. 16th the 16th and 17th. 17th. <coughs> um, so I don't know the, the best way of, I mean, do, does anybody disagree with that it's important to have a meeting to work on the questions? I think it's important that you look organized yes. and together the night of the meeting because <coughs> the, 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 the meetings of the interviews are public and I think that everyone wants to put their best foot forward. So I would suggest that either with or without Joe, that you have a meeting next week on either the 16th or 17th just to get those questions in line and who's going to ask what and those sorts of things. Ms. Pinnick? Would it be possible for us to get a copy of those questions in advance? Mm -hmm. And if we're unable to attend that meeting, we could submit suggestions or changes or offer comments? Does someone have those questions? Question. Chair? That's the question of the night. <laughs> Yes. Do you have them? Yes, I do. Yeah, I I'm sure they I, exist somewhere. I, <laughs> yes. I don't think that we should be sending them by email because then they become um, public domain and That's the idea is to keep the questions okay. confidential beforehand. Okay. Um, but we can certainly have copies at central office for people to pick up if that's the best way. I, I thought they were going to be here tonight. Well, I don't know that. Um, Laura, do we have the questions in the central office? Yes. Okay. Yes. To email them. Okay, that's fine. So we do have them in the central office, and if you're not able to make the meeting next week, then that would be the place to pick them up. Um, going back to the 16th or 17th, is there anyone who cannot make the 16th? Is there anyone who cannot make what, the 17th? What, what time would you be proposing the meeting to happen? Would this be an evening or? It, it can be any time. This is an executive session only. Okay. We just yeah, have to post the time. On the 16th, I have a committee meeting starting at 7. So the 17th? Anyone so, so you can't do the 17th? Um, 
Are you tied up? Uh, uh, I have city the city council meets that. So sixteenth. So, but it's, but it's but again, if 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 for this, if I'm not here, it's not. Uh, I don't feel this is as substantive as the interviews themselves. I'm wondering so. if this purpose, it would be best for um, for secretary to send out a a, a a Google whatever. We did for those for, for those two dates, dates and, and those people can come on which date? Did you get the seventeenth? So the seventeenth at what time would you like? Well, you have a conflict at seven. No, it's on the sixteenth. On the seventeenth. The seventeenth. Are you the only one with a conflict? Possible. Okay. Um, and what time do you need? Uh, seven o'clock is when my. So could we do early six? We so if we six? did at six, then I would like I, to okay. even go earlier than that if we could. I would but have no. a conflict earlier. Earlier. Okay. Can you make six? I can make six fifteen or six thirty, but six would be pushing it. Let's go 615, <laughs> and you might be a little late, and you might have to leave a little early. Most definitely. How's that for a compromise? <laughs> so what time is the superintendent actual <coughs> sir, on the, hmm? the night for the superintendent? What, we haven't yeah. done that one. Yeah. They start, the interviews here will start at 630. So 615, executive session on the 17th. Um, so if you could um, make sure that we have our room, and if we could be um, JFK in the in the principal's conference room that would yeah. oh it's already done already great done. thank you we're efficient in the central office okay thanks to Laura okay. so October 17th a meeting on the questions and last-minute details for the interviews and it will be at 615 starting Laura, if we could have copies of the, the the questions that we used last time for review now do people feel that Joe Wood needs to be present for that meeting or do you feel like we can do that on our own Personally, I think we can do it on our own, but is there anybody who feels strongly that we need Joe here? I'm not hearing that, so. Okay, great. Okay. Just and one thing on the questions, and this has only been from past experience, whether it was just recently on the screening committee or the <coughs> process last time. Um, I remember having meetings where we went through the questions, we identified people that would ask the question, and then didn't always have consensus on the wording of the question. And so sometimes it was sent home with the person <coughs> to rework the question and then have it ready for the next meeting. I'm a little concerned about that unless we have an executive session before we do the interviews and the time that it might take to come to an agreement on what that question looks like. So is there any way that we can ahead of time know by uh, saying, Ed, you're going to do question number six. When you come to the meeting next week, can you look it over, offer suggestions to how you best would want to present it to the candidate as a starting point, rather than having it just happen that evening? Does that make sense? Having that evening on the 16th? Right. Yeah. 17th, sorry. <laughs> For efficiency, that, that's all? Well, if, if Except that we don't know who, who's going to do which question, so you don't know which she question could. to revise the language. Right. I think without just, I'm not sure how to, how to figure that out. I'd be happy to it. assign questions. I think, I think that's what I was Honestly, getting at. Honestly, yeah. it's not yeah. a big problem. But we, we chose questions based, based on, on our interest, our areas, areas of interest and our concerns. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to facilitate it to make it a lot faster and streamlined, that's was, all. It would certainly be helpful if people could get to central office and get a copy of the questions in advance, if they're able to do that and start looking at them and seeing it, you know, if they have thoughts about them. But I actually think... There, there were two meetings last time with the superintendent because we sat down, we met, we went through the questions, we worked on the questions, then we came back again and finalized the questions, and that was two meetings. And I'm just trying to think of the timeline now and how it unfolded. And I'm concerned about. I, I do agree that I think that on the night of our interviews to have um, an executive session first makes sense just to pull ourselves together and review the questions mm -hmm. one more time. So I do think that, that that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. But I, I also think that my guess is that we're going to, that we may use, reuse some of our questions. I think we're going to be comfortable with a lot of them. And I don't think it's going to need as much work as we did last time. Last time we really started from scratch. And I don't think we're doing that this time. <coughs> and, you know, we'll see how much reworking needs to do, but it might be that we do a little breakout session and just work on the wordsmith and then see what we can do that night. Okay. I, I'm thinking 
that we're going to be able to be pretty efficient. I hope so. I hope so, too. Yeah. Mrs. Minnick. Um, I know we have a very tight budget, but is there, I think there is a line item for a school committee. Is there a reason why we can't, like, have the questions mailed to our homes, labeled confidential, oh, just so that we possible. have them sure. maybe on Saturday and or Monday instead of having to come down to the we central do. office. I would so appreciate it. I might even donate the stamps. Okay. How's that? I'll reimburse you for the stamps if that'll make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> just need them. Oh I'd love to have it without having so to come down all, there and collect it. It's green and review them it's green and be ready to discuss what you like or don't like about the questions, and then we can we can own them when we when we get to the meeting. Mm -hmm. on the Did we decide on a meeting time next week? Seven yes. Seven yes. fifteen. Okay. 650. 650. 650. Sorry. Okay. Um, can I just ask as well, was there in your uh, doodle survey, was there consensus on the 23rd or 24th? Based on everybody's responses? Or Not everyone responded, but those that responded, okay. yes. Okay. I was just trying to understand that. So. so are some people not able to make the 23rd? Is that? Only you. <laughs> I mean, how about the 24th then? Yes. Some people unable to make the 24th yes, also. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to make it. If I have oh, to skip good. the debate, I'm going to make it. Great. I'm happy. I'm glad to hear that. I'm <laughs> not choosing the superintendent. <laughs> I, I apologize that, there, that you have that conflict. That's a, I, I understand that that's a challenging conflict in the position that you're in. Um, this is the most important mm -hmm. thing that the school committee does. It certainly is. And so so that's why I said if I have to miss it, I'll miss it. But this is the most on the important thing. This is our the job. Only, the only question I have is if, you know, we, um, you know we, we have to hope that this is a date that all three candidates are, can drop whatever they're doing to be able to be here in the middle of the week. I, I, I feel a little bit for the person coming from such a distance being required to be here in the middle of the week. Um, but. No, Thursday would be better. You could stay for the weekend. I have more people who can't come on Thursday. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so I'm just, I'm hoping that that won't be um, I hope it works difficult. too, but I, I have to say, as I said to you earlier, if you want the job, you'll show. Exactly. Okay, so we're, so we're on Wednesday the 23rd and um, at... We need 30, a time 6 30. for at six o'clock for the executive session. Six thirty will be the first interview. Could I suggest five forty-five then for executive session? Sure. Can people do that? Can we just say five forty-five for executive session? Six thirty will be your first interview. And um, I, I thank our um, acting superintendent um, in advance for the amount of work that this requires to set up that day. It's, it's a, an enormous amount of logistics and, and effort on uh, her part and the administrator's part. Um, again, it is the most important thing that this does, and I really appreciate um, that all that you're going to have to put aside to plan that day. Happy to do it, and we have great people in the central office. Laura and Tracy will be helping and uh, the administrators are more than happy to uh, play their part in it. And have, have they already spoken to you about the whole process that we did last time so that you're aware of um, like I able to talk think about what yes. worked and didn't work? And yes, I'm, I'm sure we can pull this together. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, last question. Do we feel that we need Joe Wood to be present for the interview night? Does anybody feel that he needs to be here for that? Okay. So Was he present? No. Okay. So I guess I'm hearing that folks are comfortable proceeding the way we did in the past. Yeah. And I will say on the night that we're doing the questions and on an interview night, if we have questions, he's only my, my cell phone call away. And um, we, we did make use of that. He's, he's been a great resource. Um, we needed to call him at one point during one of our past meetings. And um, we were able to do that. And he really helped us out. So he is available to us. He'll know when our meetings are. Phone a friend thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. On my speed dial, what can I tell you? Okay, so any other questions about the superintendent search uh, process? Okay, uh, so the next item on the agenda is new business.
Uh, I don't not believe we have any new business items. Uh, future business and meeting dates, well, we just heard a couple of them, um, although one will be an executive session. Um, potential superintendent candidate interviews, that's there. School committee meeting November 14th. Um, the next item, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The meeting is adjourned. Actually, we're going.